This is the second video in a series on using the Dash Studio functionality within the SimHub software. In the first video, we looked at the Dash Studio interface and the menus up at the top and how to view dashboards. If you want to learn more about that, watch the first video. But in this video, we're going to create a new dashboard. And we do that by clicking the blue button in the top right here on the Dash Studio and you're asked to give your dashboard a name. I'll call this my tutorial dashboard. And click OK. That will open up a new window. And we can zoom in and out of our dashboard using the slider here. And if we want this to be as large as we can make it but have everything fit, we can click on this rightmost button. And the 100% is based on the dimensions that you set for your dashboard. This is going to make it so that every pixel on your dashboard matches a pixel on your monitor. Along the top here you have tabs, so you can actually have multiple dashboards open at once. Let's open up another dashboard um, in edit mode. And now you see we have two tabs open. That's really helpful if you're viewing another dashboard and you are copying elements from it or using it for reference, it's nice to be able to have multiple dashboards open up here at once. We'll close this, just leaving my tutorial dashboard open for the time being. We have a menu here where we can save our dashboard. We have our cut, copy, and paste commands. I'll talk about widgets later. And then we have a menu here where directly in this editor view, I can run my dashboard. So if I want to test it out right now, there is my very boring dashboard, which has nothing on it right now. Below that, we have a toolbar, and I'll get into these options and what they do in the next video. Along the left-hand side, we have the components that we can add to our dashboard canvas here. And then in this right-hand panel, we have three tabs, one for screen, this is where we're going to manipulate the components that we have added to our dashboard. The next one is dashboard, and we are going to spend a minute here assigning some of the properties for our dashboard. First and very important is the dimensions, the width and the height of your dashboard. And you really want this to match whatever your output device is. If you are creating a dashboard for a 1080p monitor, you'd want to set this to 1920 by 1080. If you are developing for one of those Vocor screens or a USB D480 screens, you'd want to match the dimensions here. And especially the aspect ratio, that's really important so that you don't have elements stretched and skewed when you're trying to fit your dashboard that you created onto a device that might be more wide or more tall than you had created it to be. We can give our dashboard a title, like my tutorial dashboard. And here under category, this is where it's going to show up in the menu. So I know that I have a category called uh, David's Creations. The show on screen controls on dash hover, I talked about those in the last video. You can always turn those off on a per dashboard basis on that top right if you hit that dashed circle but if you know you'd never want those, you can turn those off. Overlays, I talked about overlays before, that's where you can put your dashboard uh, actually on top of the sim that you're running. Enable click-through means that, say that you do have an overlay, but you want to interact with elements underneath it, say it's a menu, a menu in Assetto Corsa Competizione, right? You want to click on something. By default, or if we didn't have that checked, when I clicked, that would click on the dashboard. But with this checkbox checked, it will, in fact, click on the element that's underneath the overlay. And then dashboard messaging, I asked on the Discord about this and uh, was told that there are some dashboard messaging overlays that can show up on your dashboard, like changing uh, the force feedback settings for a Thrustmaster wheel and things like that. So you could allow or deny those here. Next we have dashboard screens. A dashboard is going to have one screen by default, and you can name these screens by double clicking on it here. And so I'll call this the main driving screen. That works. 
And then each screen has properties listed down here. So this by default is going to be an in-game screen, meaning when you are racing and the engine is running, this will be shown. An idle screen is if the sim is not outputting any telemetry. This, you might just have, you know, a logo in the background. You can even have things on there like the time of day. And so if you want an idle screen that would show when you don't have telemetry from the game coming, you can do that. And then uh, pit screen is going to appear whenever you uh, are in the pit lane. This will appear. I'm going to just do a simple in-game screen right here. And then uh, background. A dashboard screen can have a background color, like green, or black, or gray, or a background. And you might be thinking, oh, it'd be really cool to put a you know, photograph of a track or, or a car as your background. But that would actually be kind of difficult to see the interface elements on top of a photograph like that. And so if you are going to use a background image, a texture might make more sense, like a a uh, carbon fiber texture. I think I have one in here. There we go. Now let's just pick that first carbon fiber. And there's a background that's not as distracting. My preference is to use just solid colors or maybe a gradient uh, at most, but whatever you decide. And I've also seen some dashes where they use the background image actually to put all of the elements that are not going to change. So maybe it's the you know rectangles that would house all of the things like the fuel remaining and the, the speed and the RPMs. And maybe they would create that inside of Photoshop or Illustrator and bring that in here as an image. The benefit to a background is that you can't accidentally click on it and drag it and move it out of place. When we start putting components on there, they are movable. And so if you want to make sure that your background stays in place, then instead of just putting an image on your dashboard, you could use this background here. And finally, images. There is a common library of images, and you can navigate to that in your SimHub installation folder. The developer has put in some things that you might need, like LED images. But a lot of the time you're going to be bringing in your own image assets. And so you can add images here and these images will be stored within the dashboard itself. And that makes a lot of sense, especially if you are sharing this dashboard with other people, because when you export this for uploading to race department or the forums on SimHub or the Discord, then all of those image, images will come along with it. That's all I have to say about the creation of a dashboard. In the next video, we're going to talk about working with this, uh, this toolbar along the top and what those items do.